Hey guys, Phil with Trop Gun. We're out here at the range today. We're going to be taking a look at zeroing. We got a new build project here. So we need to zero this rifle. And it's a question I get asked all the time. What do you zero your AR-15 or what do you zero any rifle at? You know, what do you prefer? There's a lot of different zeros out there. The 5200, the 100, 300 zero. We've also got, and, and I've seen some guys do some crazy zeros on guns they called entry guns or CQB guns, where they'd zero that rifle at 10 or even 25 yards. So I prefer personally the 5200 zero. I'm just gonna walk you through step by step how we use that zero, how we do that zero, how we accomplish that. A couple little mistakes that we commonly see on that, and if you have the full range, and we do here at this facility, 50 and 200 meters, we're gonna be able to go ahead and get a really, really tight zero and take the time to do it right and then be able to confirm that. So we're gonna work through. We got a Viper PST from Vortex as the optic. We're running on our Project Odin gun. So 5200 zero, check it out. Okay, we're getting ready to start off on our zero here. Again, we're running with a 5200 zero. So I have my target out at 50. And what I like to do is I start off with, I just wanna get myself in the area. So I don't need to mess around with really, really tight uh, vices or bag setups. You can just see I have a very, very simple, my shooting bag is my, my rest. I'm running my magnified optic on my maximum magnification. And in the case of this Viper PST, it's an illuminated reticle. So I wanna just turn that reticle on just bright enough to be able to identify the target. I have a black shoot and see target, so I do have the, the Illum turned on a little bit. If I use a lighter colored target, I leave the Illuminator reticle completely off. And I'm gonna go ahead and fire a three shot group. I just wanna see where the rifle's hitting. I don't need that group to be tight. I just need to start to be able to begin to narrow down into where we're, we're taking our shots so I can make my initial adjustment. I'm gonna start off just using a rudimentary rest like this at 50. I'm gonna fire a series of three shot groups. As long as I don't have a called flyer or something in there that I know I can't get a good judge of where my group is hitting. And I'll walk that into about as close to the center as I can get it without spending a ton of ammunition at the 50. Because then what we're gonna do is move that back to the 200 and that's really where we're gonna fine tune this group. Does shoot flat. Looks like 10 o'clock edge of the ring. Okay, so I fired that first three round group. My first three shots when I'm working on this 5200 zero. So you can see, we're just a little bit high, a couple inches over to the left. Again, not real tight. I wasn't worried about keeping the super, super shot tight group. I just needed to know where it was and it gave me a good center. So I can make my adjustments. What's important to know now is understanding your optic and what those adjustments translate to. So on that Viper PST, each click is a half minute. So if we bring that into 50 yards, that's at 100 yards, so if we bring that into 50, we have to basically half it again. So it's going to take four clicks to move the strike of the round one inch. So I need to make about four clicks down and I'm gonna go eight clicks right on my, uh, my first adjustment and see where that gets us. If that puts me anywhere in the 10 ring, and you'll notice we're using some Birchwood Casey shoot and see targets. I like to use these because no matter what your magnification level on your optic is, unless you're just shooting a point optic and zeroing out an EOTech or an aim point or something like that, I can see through my optic where my hits are without having to have a spotting scope and bringing another piece of gear to the range with me. So always wanna make bold adjustments. What we don't wanna do is we don't wanna make little adjustments and step it in. If anything, I might even go 10 clicks right and see if that brings me over and we begin to bracket it. So I may go bold and, and go past and then come back, but I'm gonna drop down four and right eight and see where that gets us. Okay, so here we go. We're getting ready to fire another three shot group. I've made my adjustments to the scope. We're gonna go ahead and check and see how close we are to the center before we move back to the 200 and fine tune it. All right, here we go. That's our second three shot group. As you can see, not super tight, but I was firing those shots really quick and I wasn't worried about a real tight rest. That's centered enough and I'm happy enough to go ahead and move back to the 200 and fine tune this zero. So we've moved back to the 200, we're gonna work on the fine tune. When I switch from the close to the far, the 50 to the 200, I switch from a three shot group to a five shot group. That's gonna help me determine if any of the shots that I had were flyers that I didn't call on the trigger. Let me get a good center of that five shot group and then start really dialing it into fine tune. Never accepting anything until all those five shots are right exactly where I want them to be.
But take a look at what we did, the 200. You can see my shot group, a little bit widened out. I'm just using standard XM193, 55 grain full metal jacket. If you take these two into consideration over here, probably the center of my group is about this shot right here. So under the guise of making bold adjustments to really fine tune, I'm gonna come down one click and I'm gonna come left two clicks and see where that puts my group at. All right, so we just got done with that next five shot group at the 200. And you can see, remember these two were from that first five shot group. So we have our five shots. For our, our vertical adjustment, every shot is within a half an inch of each other. So I know we're good to go. I made that, that one click adjustment, got me about where I wanted to be. Left to right, again, shooting off a rudimentary rest. And I was just shooting uh, XM 193, 55 grain, full metal jacket, nothing special. I wouldn't expect to see great shot group sizes. We're getting ready to, in another video, we're really gonna test what that own barrel's capable of and see how tight we can get these shot groups. But that's centered up. I mean, I have rounds, I'm, I'm essentially bracketed dead center. So from never firing a shot out of that rifle, brand new rifle, brand new optic, new build, within 16 rounds, I'm zeroed anything from contact distance to 200 without a single bit of an adjustment. If you checked out our Odin video that we did here recently, where we went over the Project Odin and the Odin barrel, you might have seen that we did the uh, comparison of some different ammunition, see what shot groups we could produce with that Odin barrel. It makes a great point also though for zeros. Now we shot those groups at 100 yards. If you remember, we're running a 5200 zero. So it shows you here with the XM193, which that's what we were zeroing the gun originally with. You can see we have the center of the group about an inch high, which is about what we would expect to see an inch to an inch and a half high at 100 from that 50 out between the 200. That 100 is a little bit of an intermediate distance. Still within the mechanical offset from the sights to the bore. The 855, that heavier bullet drops it down a little bit, but what's really interesting, the exact same barrel produced totally different zero results. So it really shows you that if you're using different types of ammunition, you have got to zero your rifle to the ammunition that you expect to use that rifle with. So if it's a defensive load and you're trying to shoot a 62 grain or a 69 grain or some other type of defensive load, but you zero with 55, you see the difference. This is the exact same hold points, exact same distance. And some of these 69, these are both 69 grain and 77 grain ammunitions. It dropped it down to a perfect spot at 100. So at 50, we would actually we would be hitting low. And at 200, conversely, then we would also probably be striking low. So you got a zero to the ammo that you're going to use for the specific task. So that was the zeroing video, how I zero my modern sporting rifles. Uh, right again, running that 5200 zero. I like that. And we can, we're going to talk in other videos, the, the tactical application of different zeros, what that means by your sight offset to your bore, things like that, what, what that all means. But in a nutshell, that 5200 zero gives me a working zero that I know my shot is within the difference of my offset of my sights from contact all the way to 200. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a comment. If you have a different opinion and a different zero, we'd love to hear about it. Leave that in the comment section. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe.